Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now, this is really, really getting in. And I believe you are learning something. Hey, I would really, really like to hear from you. If, if this broadcast is really being a blessing to your life, I want to hear from you. If you have questions, now several of you have been sending me questions. And I try to answer them as much as I can. Praise God. Now, if I see your question, I surely will answer. You will get a reply from us, no matter what the question, of course, I don't expect you to ask, ask silly questions, <laughs> praise God, but ask questions that you really need the answer to, and you'll surely get an answer, praise God, and, and, and I know if you've got testimonies, I would really like to hear from you, testimonies encourages the preacher, you see, it makes him know that what he's doing, led by the Spirit of God, is making impacts. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. You are wonderful. And you are doing marvelous things in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because right now, you are guiding us into all truth. Even as burdens are being lifted right now, and yokes are being destroyed in the lives of those that are watching and listening to me right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Today, we are exposed to your truth and we will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So I was telling you yesterday, as asking, you know, I've always said this. If you want to pray, the first prayer point you must raise in your prayer is, Lord, what should I pray? Or how should I pray on this matter? The same thing like what I was telling you yesterday. Ask God for his mind, no matter what it is. You see, sometimes I found out, especially this year, it became, it became evident to me that a lot of believers truly don't have faith. You know, I started this year teaching on tithing, and I told you how it's important. You, when you take your tithe, you must ask the Lord consigning your tithe. You must ask the Lord where he wants you to take your tithe. And I got, I mean, lots of questions and, and comments. And people were saying, I noticed this was a pattern. And like, eh, but what if God doesn't talk to you? Why don't you give it to a, a minister that you trust? He has God and he will know what to do. I got several of those, those um, um, questions or comments. And I said to myself, I said, hey, what's the problem here? What's the problem here? And I began to pray and ask the Lord concerning. I'm like, why? Why are this quick? Why is this quick? And believers now talking. And then the Lord began to minister to me. So when we're done with this, I'm going to start another series on, on dealing with that issue. Because I've heard the Lord concerning it. Because it's very important. This is the found fundamental issue about our lives as Christians. If you don't believe, now I did, I think last year, was it November or so, I did a series of teaching on these things. But I, we need to go back to it. We need to go back to it. You yourself, you can look for, I can't remember the, what the title was, but you can, you can look for, I think November, from first week of November down, I started talking about faith. Maybe the foundation of our faith or something like that. Very important. As a child of God, if you are not convinced in your heart that God will answer you when you pray, then there's a big problem. How then do you know you're saved? Because there must be a witness in your spirit. You are not saved because the pastor said you are saved. No, sir. You are saved because the Holy Spirit saved you. It's his job. And when he does that job, you will know that something has happened inside of you. You will know. So when you find believers or professing believers who are not sure when they ask God where they should take their tithes to, he will answer them. So either they are too lazy or they don't believe God is going to answer them. See, it's either of these two things. And as a child of God, you can't be lazy. You're playing with your life. So it's the same thing we're talking about here. Withdrawing from your heavenly account. You've got to, you know, you've got to 
Know that when you ask God for his wisdom, he will give it to you. You should know that. He loves you that much. He won't keep you in the dark. And that's why I say you must be specific. Ask him. Number two, and this is very important also. See, I'm setting your mind right. So when, when you go before the Lord to make a withdrawal, you will know it is sure and you will see the result. Number two, whatever you need in your life is never far away from you. You need to get that. Whatever you need in your life. Now, I, I, I don't, I'm not just saying once. I mean, don't just sit down and say, okay, mm, I want to drive a Rolls Royce right now. That's not what I'm talking about. But you know, you get to a stage where, I mean, you just, that will just come to your spirit. And the next moment you're driving one. But you get what I mean. Whatever you need in your life is never far away from you. As long as it's a genuine need, believe me, your answer is somewhere around you. I'll show you some scriptures to, to buttress this. Now, Genesis chapter 21. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 21. Now, the background story, this was when God uh, told uh, Abraham to send Haggai and Ishmael away. And so Abraham obeyed the voice of the Lord. Guess what now? And they got on the journey. Now, let me read Genesis 21 and verse 27. Okay, let me start from verse 15. And the water in the skin, now Abraham has sent them with water and little food. And the water in, in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under, under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance, and about a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted up her voice and wept. Verse 17, and God heard the voice of the lad. Now, isn't that amazing? The, the mother was crying, but God heard the voice of the lad. Watch this. Then God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Wonderful. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Now look at verse 19. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad to drink. Did you see that? Now she got to the spot. No water. They were thirsty. They were famished. I mean, they were to her. This is the end. She sat down there, put the boy on the ground, walked across, sat down. I said, I don't want to see this boy die. Die of what? He was thirsty. He was hungry. At least a water would do. And then she began to cry to the Lord. And guess what? When God spoke with her, what did the Bible say? Then the Lord opened her eyes and she saw a well of water come to think of it she was just i mean by the time they got to the place where they really needed water they were not far from a well listen god is too organized don't tell me you got yourself into trouble and you don't know how to come out of it you know how to come out of it it's in you the solution is not far away but sometimes because of your pride, what do I mean pride? Because you are thinking you got yourself into this trouble, so leave God out of it. If God wants to do anything for me, it is mercy he will show me. Yes, but listen, you are too qualified for that mercy. And I'll tell you the truth. Just like the Bible said in the book of Corinthians, it said he will never allow a temptation that is above you to come to you. So you find Haggai right there the Bible says God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'll show you another one. Abraham this time. Oh, Bashako Mambrodo Telegeda Hakabaya. Thank you, Jesus. Now you know the story, Genesis 22, just the next chapter. God told Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac, go and offer him 
on one of the mountains of Moriah. And God said, the one I will show you. Read it up, you'll see. God said, the one that I will show you. So it was a specific mountain and he understood the instruction. And he said, all right, Lord, I will go. And then, now, guess what? There's something I will show you. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 7. But Isaac, now they were on the, on the journey, they were going. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the bond offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a bond offering. So the two of them went together. See? Now, now sometimes people, you know, I've heard preachers say, the boy did not know that he was the offering. No, 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 no. Abraham knew that Isaac was not the offering. Now, that was his faith. Even though God said, go and offer your son, Abraham knew in his heart that this instruction is clear, but something is amiss. Why? Because God had told him, in Isaac shall your seed be. Okay, so the same God now is telling him, go and offer this son as a sacrifice. I know I've heard God thinking, I'm here, I'm thinking now. But say, I'm going to obey him. But then I know this is not the offering. So he took him. So when he told Isaac, Isaac, the Lord will provide himself the offering for the sacrifice. He meant it by every word. Now read down, let's go down. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Then, verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. So, he, he listened to God's instruction. There are several mountains in Moriah. So, he had to follow the instruction of God to the particular mountain that God told him to go. Now, watch this. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Because that's what God instructed him to do. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to lay his son, to slay his son, excuse me. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. I said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For I know for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behold, behind him was a ram caught in, his ticket, in, a, in a ticket by his horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. The same thing he told his son. So, this was now the confirmation of Abraham's faith. I said it. The Lord will provide. Now, what happened? God didn't say, hey, Abraham, go down the mountain. Go left, go right. You will see. No, right there. How come Abraham didn't see all this while he was binding Isaac and laying him on the altar? How come he never saw it? The Lord who commanded him to go and offer the sacrifice knew there must be a sacrifice. And the Lord provided a ram for the sacrifice. What did I tell you? The solution is never far away from you where you are. When that problem came up, the solution is never far away. Now, that's one thing you need to do. You need to trust God. I said, number one, ask God for his wisdom. Number two, why you ask God for his wisdom, you must know in your heart that, hey, the solution to this issue is not far away. See, when your heart is set like that, what, what are you doing? You're asking the Lord, Lord, open my eyes to where the solution is. Open my eyes to the provision that you have made. See, that's what's in your heart. So, Lord, how do I pray this prayer? How, how, do, I, how do I approach this issue? How do I deal with this issue? I know the solution. is For me to get here, solution is around here. For me to get, now, I've been fired from my job, yes. And now my house rent is due, yes. The solution is not far away. So, Lord, what do you want me to do? What would you have me do in this situation? Lord, are we going to pay this rent? Or are we going to move to another place? See, what's the solution? Lord, how do you want me to approach? What's your wisdom in this situation now? I told you the other day, keep giving thanks to the Lord. Keep giving thanks to Him. Even with a smile on your face. Don't say, mm, mm, this, thing is, this thing is heavy on me. No. With a smile on your face. 
give thanks to the Lord. What's going to happen? He will open your eyes like he did Abraham's eyes. He will open your eyes like he did Hagar's eyes. And they found the solution. It wasn't far. Out of the mouth of these two witnesses, let me talk like a lawyer, it is established that your solution is never far away from you. I rest my case today. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>